from and Jenna Adams on Channel 12 News. Today's top story is all about cloning. To Mark Brown. Cloning is creating an identical copy of an original organism or thing. There are three types of cloning. The first type is called DNA cloning. The second type is called reproductive cloning. And the third type is called therapeutic cloning. DNA cloning has been around since the 1970s and is the transfer of a fragment of DNA from an organism to a self-replicating genetic element, such as a bacterial plasma. DNA cloning is still a common practice today. Now, reproductive cloning is the most famous type of cloning. It is to make an animal with the same DNA as another living animal. A sheep named Dolly was made by reproductive cloning. She was cloned in 1996 and lived until February 2003. Dolly was cloned in a process called somatic cell nuclear transfer, or also known as SCNT. That is when scientists transfer genetic material from a nucleus to an egg, which is genetic material has been removed. The new egg with the DNA must be treated with chemicals or electric current in order to stimulate cell division. Once it reaches a reasonable stage, it is transferred to the uterus of a female host where it continues to develop until birth. Therapeutic cloning is also called embryo cloning. The goal of this is to harvest stem cells to, so they can study human development and treating diseases. Roman Catholicism and many conservative Christian groups have opposed human cloning and the cloning of human embryos, believing that life begins at the moment of conception. Other Christian denominations, such as the United Church of Christ, do not believe a fertilized egg constitutes a living being. But still, they oppose cl the cloning of embryonic cells. The World Council of Churches, representing nearly 400 no denominations worldwide, opposed cloning of both human embryos and whole humans in February 2006. The United Methodist Church opposed research and reproductive cloning in May 2000 and again in May 2004. In her gene therapy procedure, doctors remove white blood cells from the child's body, let the cells grow in the lab, inserted the missing genes into the cells, and then infused the genetically modified blood cells back into the patient's bloodstream. Laboratory tests have shown that the therapy strength strengthened Ashanti's Ashant immune system. In most gene therapy studies, a normal gene is inserted into the genome to replace an abnormal disease-causing gene. A carrier molecule called a vector must be used to de deliver the therapeutic gene to the patient's target cells. Currently, the most common vector is a virus that has been genetically altered to carry normal human DNA. Well, hi there, doggy doggy. Viruses has, have evolved a way of in encapsulating and delivering their genes to human cells in a pathogenic matter. Scientists have tried to take advantage of this capability and manipulate the virus genome to remove disease-causing genes and insert therapeutic genes. There are two types of gene therapy, somatic gene therapy and germline gene therapy. Somatic gene therapy is bringing in a good gene into cells where the patient is treated. Germline therapy is modifying the genes in egg or sperm. On October 3rd, 2002, gene therapy was stopped in France when one of the patients got leukemia. And on March 18th, 2002, sickle cell was successfully treated in mice. There are two human genome projects. The first one is the International HGP, which is made by governments and organizations. The second by a private company called Cellular Genomics. The human genome project began in 1990. The Human Genome Project was going to be a 15-year effort made by the U.S. Department of Energy and the National Institutes of Health. The project at first was planned to last 15 years, ending in 2005, but quick technical advances sped the completion date to 2003. Their goals were to identify all those genes in the human DNA. They would determine sequences of chemical base pairs that make up the human DNA and store this data in databases. Woo, it's hot in here. For data analysts, they would improve their tools. They would send technologies to private sector and address the ethical, legal, and social issues that may happen. To help make these goals happen, researchers studied the genetic makeup of a non-human organism like the fruit fly, the laboratory mouse, and many other animals. The unique fact of the Human Genome Project is that it was the first large scientific undertaking to... By licensing technologies to private companies and awarding grants for innovative research, 
The project catalyzed a multi-billion dollar U.S. biotechnology industry and fostered development of new medical applications. We had help from Japan, France, Germany, China, and many other countries in the Human Genome Project. They discovered that there are 26,000 genes in the plant thale crest, 18,000 in the nematode worm, 13,000 in the fruit fly, 6,000 in yeast, and 4,000 in tuberculosis microbe. They also discovered that only 3% of DNA are useful and 97% of DNA are junk. At the end of the Human Genome Project, the information would fill a stack of paperback books 200 feet high and fill 200 telephone directories. There is six feet of DNA in each of our cells packed into a structure only .0004 inches across. There are three billion letters in the DNA code in every cell in your body. There are 100 trillion cells in the body. 12,000 letters of DNA are decoded by Human Genome Project every second. Now did you know that? I didn't either. Human Genome Project created the thing. And By licensing tech, technology, oh my god! Technologies, technologies innovative. innovative. Technologies innovative. Okay, ready? Yeah. By licensing technologies to.